the organizers and uh, ASI. It's really an honor to be part of this uh, presentation. And I wanna thank all of you for being here. So as my title says, I'm gonna present the top line efficacy results from Clarity AD. These are my disclosures, including my relationships with ASI. And this uh, slide summarizes the top line efficacy endpoints for Clarity AD. Uh, as Michael alluded to, the primary endpoint changed from baseline at 18 months in the CDRSB. And key secondary endpoints also uh, changed from baseline at 18 months in a biomarker, amyloid PET, and then three more clinical measures, the ADAS COG-14, the ADCOMS and the ADCS MCI ADL. Now, um, this slide uh, uh, summarizes the results for the primary and key secondary endpoints. Again, um, this trial, Clarity AD, did meet the pr uh, primary efficacy endpoint. The CDRSB changed from baseline to 18 months. And then below the line, it also met all. Um, key secondary efficacy endpoints uh, for amyloid PET, ADAS, COG, ADCOMS, and ADCS, MCI, ADL. So I can now stop right here. We're done. Um, actually, I don't want to go through the numbers in this table because we're going to look at these results uh, graphically and individually in the next few slides. So this is, you know, maybe the key uh, uh, figure from the study uh, for the primary endpoint, the CDRSB, the clinical dementia rating scale, sum of boxes. And um, for all of these uh, results that I'm gonna show you, remember that they are for the modified intention to treat population. That is anyone who was randomized and dosed, had a baseline assessment and had at least one post-dose uh, primary efficacy assessment, the CDRSB. And just to a little more elaboration on the CDR, for anyone uh, not so familiar, this is a global rating scale. Uh, it involves an interview with the uh, participant and an informant, and it generates scores on six different domains, some cognitive, some functional. <clears throat> Those scores are zero to three. So the overall score can range from zero to 18, where higher scores indicate greater impairment. Um, as Michael alluded to, our, our, these individuals are more compressed on the low end, starting at 3.2. Uh, what this graph um, uh, shows you, first of all, on the vertical axis, we're looking at, again, adjusted mean change from baseline in the CDRSB. We're looking at standard error bars. And we're looking at p-values that come from the mixed model of repeated measures, uh, MMRM, that's, uh, that's detailed in the footnote. So what do we see here? Well, I, I, we see in the placebo group that people uh, on a placebo were um, declined by 1.66 points over the course of 18 months. We see that the actively treated group declines by 1.21, a difference of 0.45, which is uh, highly statistically significant. And um, significant differences emerge as early as the six month time point. Now, moving on to uh, the key secondary, starting with a biomarker endpoint amyloid PET. And remember, Randy's going to present all the biomarker results. I'm just confined to one, uh, the key secondary of amyloid PET, which is an e efficacy outcome. And um, this is a sub-study involving 39% of the total. These individuals had to be randomized and dosed. They had to have a baseline PET and they had to have at least one post-dose PET scan. So, um, uh, fibrillar amyloid burden was evaluated uh, from one of three different approved tracers, fluorbetaben, fluorbetapir, flutamatamol. And since we had to pool data from multiple tracers, multiple sites, the SUVR values were converted to centaloids, which you've heard about a few times. I just want to review a little bit more what it is. You know, so this is a scale that is anchored 
with a zero value for uh, what normal young controls show on average. And 100 is what people with mild uh, to moderate AD dementia show on average. And uh, as Michael said, these folks started at about a 76 centiloid. The threshold of positivity, although entry was determined by visual read, um, we know that entry corresponds semi-quantitatively to about 30 centiloids. So to keep that in mind. And what, what this uh, uh, figure then shows us is that the placebo group actually gains a wee bit uh, of amyloid 3.6 centiloids, and the treated group shows a, 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 a sizable decline, 55.5, resulting in a drug placebo difference of 59.1 against, again, highly uh, significant. And in particular, at the end of the study, at the end of 18 months, those in the treated group had an average centiloid value of 23. So below the threshold of amyloid positivity that would uh, you know, get them into the study in the first place. And, and significant differences were evidenced as early as the very first post-dose PET scan at three months. So uh, additional secondaries, now the, the clinical secondaries, starting with the cognitive measure, the ADAS-COG. Um, this is uh, scored zero to 90, higher scores are worse. And what we see here, here is that the placebo group declines on the ADAS-COG by uh, 5.58 points. The uh, lecanemab treated declines by 4.14. As I recall, a difference of 1.44, again, highly significant, and significant differences emerge as early as six months. The ADCOMs, um, for those not familiar, this is actually derived from uh, multiple other assessments, the items on the CDR, the ADAS, and the mini mental state exam. And it's really engineered to try to produce maximal sensitivity to change in this early AD population. And uh, it scored zero to 1.97, higher scores are worse. And, and in the, this figure shows us that the placebo group declines by 0.214 and the uh, actively treated group 0.164, as I recall, producing a difference of 0 0.05. Again, highly statistically significant and significant as early as the six month time point again. And finally, the functional measure, the ADCS MCI ADL, um, this is scored zero to 53. And for, for once, uh, it's actually a lower score that, that's worse. Uh, and, and this uh, graph shows us that for the placebo treated, they declined by, or they worsened by 5.5 points. Uh, at 18 months, the active group 3.5 for a difference of 2.0, uh, highly significant uh, and represents a 37% slowing of decline on daily functioning by lecanemab at 18 months. And, and significant differences again emerged at six months by six months. So those are the top line efficacy results for Clarity AD. What I wanna do with my remaining time is talk about some uh, sensitivity analyses that we did as well as some subgroup analyses. And these are really to look at the robustness of these effects to multiple factors, and then to look at their um, consistency across a range of subgroups. So here, here we're looking at pre-specified sensitivity analyses. Remember one more time, that up until now we're talking about modified intention to treat uh, population, you know, dosed, had a baseline, and had a post-dose uh, CDR. Uh, and, and these are sensitivity analyses for the CDR-SP itself. So the, the previous, uh, the primary analysis is, is what's shown in the top row above the line for comparison with these four different sensitivity analyses. In the first one, we wanted to look at what the impact would be of missing data. So for that, uh, a rank uh, analysis of covariance was performed with missing data imputed by multiple imputation. Uh, the second sensitivity analysis, instead of modified intention to treat, was standard intention to treat. That is all randomized individuals, regardless of whether they got dosed. In fact, all of them did. 
and regardless of whether they had a post-dose CDRSB, and, and some did not, of course, because they may early terminate before you know, that assessment was done. The third sensitivity analysis was to look at the impact of, of ARIA E, um, and, and primarily for functional unblinding, because uh, it could unblind, certainly unblinds, could unblind uh, participants um, and, and uh, study partners and possibly clinical raters, although they were, um, you know, rigorously uh, kept, um, you know, unaware of safety data. And, the and in that case, what, what was done was to censor any assessments that occurred after occurrence of ARIA-E. The fourth sensitivity analysis was to look at the um, impact of COVID. And again, Michael already spilled the beans, but you know, there was this thing, a global pandemic. Some of you might have heard about you know, 2020, and so much of the trial was conducted during that. It's really remarkable, I think, especially what the participants did for the study. But, but here we wanted to look at the impact of the pandemic on missed dosing in particular, because some of the sites at the peak of the pandemic, you know, were shut down, uh, you know, temporarily, my, you know, my site included. And um, so in this case, individuals who missed at least three consecutive doses during the peak of the pandemic were excluded from the analysis. And with that, all of that in mind, then, if you think about these four sensitivity analyses, what you can really see is that, um, should have been using my pointer, but in, the, in this uh, you know, column here, maybe I shouldn't have been using the pointer, um, you know, the, the treatment difference at 18 months is really pretty similar you know, across sensitivity analyses and similar to the primary. The percent slowing is really pretty similar um, you know, between 25 and 30%. And of course, the p-values are, are all highly significant. So in, in brief, um, you know, these, these analyses revealed the results are, are very robust. Um, so uh, quickly then to go over some subgroup analyses, um, and, and this was done to look at, uh, you know, the consistency across a number of subgroups. This slide, first of all, shows uh, sensitivity analysis for the CDR um, for those subgroups that were used for the randomization stratification. Those are shown on the, on the left column. And these are forest plots, which show adjusted mean difference in CDRSB versus placebo with 95% confidence intervals. And if you just scan you know, down the, um, you know, the center of the forest plot here, you can see that all of the values uh, you know, favor lecanemab. So all of these uh, factors used for you know, randomization stratification, uh, Alzheimer's meds at baseline, clinical subgroup that is MCI versus dementia, APOE4 carrier status, region of the world, all the subgroups showed you know, similar results. And these then are, are the very same analyses for two of the key secondaries, the ADS COG, the ADL. And again, if you just scan down the forest plots, you can see again that all of these favored lecanemab, you know, for both of these key secondaries. <clears throat> the other sensitive, uh, the other subgroup analyses we, we did were for variables, other kinds of variables of interest that weren't used for randomization stratification, but still important. Uh, to Alzheimer's disease. And without going into all these in details, if you scan down you know, the forest plots, you can see that nearly all of them favor lecanemab. One exception, APOE4 homozygotes. Um, now, I don't think we should make too much of this. I certainly don't. Um, this is, uh, with so many subgroups, we're bound by chance to have some that, that go the opposite direction. And I think for APOE4 homozygotes, first of all, it's a small subgroup. Um, it, it showed unexpectedly um, slow decline with the CDRSB in the placebo group, which may have been a factor. And maybe importantly is that for pretty much all other endpoints, all other assessments, the APOE4 homozygote group did favor lecanemab, including uh, if we look at the next slide, which is the same analyses in, with the ADS COG and the ADCS MCI ADL. Now you scan down the forest plots and every last one of them favors the canemab, including for the APOE4 homozygotes. So then just uh, briefly, these subgroup analyses show that the results are very consistent across a broad range of subgroups. So in summary, the canemab treatment met the primary and 
and secondary endpoints versus placebo at 18 months with highly significant differences starting at six months. For the CDRSB, lecanemab re reduced clinical decline by 27%. Uh, on amyloid PET, lecanemab reduced amyloid uh, burden starting at three months. For the ADAS COG14, um, lecanemab slowed cognitive decline by 26%, for the ADCOMS by 24%, and for the ADL uh, slowed functional decline by 37%. And the results were consistent across a broad range of endpoints and subgroups. And in conclusion then, lecanemab reduced markers of amyloid and early AD and resulted in less decline than placebo on all measures of cognition and function at 18 months. These differences were observed as early as six months, and these findings encompassed a broad range of endpoints and subgroups. And I thank you for your attention.